truly we bless the Lord. We thank him for his grace and his mercy. We give honor to God and his son, Jesus Christ. We thank the Lord for a new day. Another day we've never seen before. Another day. God has been so good to us. We are grateful and we are thankful. We live in times that each day is a blessing. Not that it wasn't before, but if you don't really realize it now, you ought to. That each day is a blessing. That you're able to make it through the day unharmed. Make it through the day, come out with your right mind, my, my, my. and yet be strengthened and thank God for food on the table and clothes on your back. That's the kind of God we serve, a God who's faithful in terrible times, in times of indecision, in times of crisis. We serve a God who is faithful. Yes. I understand why David said in the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd. And? I shall not want. He recognized that a relationship with, with God was more valuable than anything he possessed. He said, listen, because I have the shepherd of my life in charge of my life, he said, listen, I shall not I want. Shall. Thank God that he can give you comfort in the midst of crisis. Thank God that he is faithful to do what he has said. I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet if you can just for a minute as we read God's word. We thank God for his word. That's the only standard we have is the word of God. That's why you need to read the word of God to keep the word of God in your heart. So that even if this was removed from you, you have it in you. Amen. I love Amen. Amen. Our text is James, of, uh, James, the first chapter of James, the book of James. I will be reading. James, a servant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greetings. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be, be, be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven and the wind with the wind and tossed. But let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. May the Lord add a blessing Hallelujah. to the reading and the hearing of his word. You may be seated. God bless you. God bless you. Thank God for the word of God there is refreshing, there is anointing, there is power in the word of God. Amen. And I'm so glad that God has left his word on record so that we can have opportunity as well as privilege to know what God says and be able to take God's word and as the psalmist said, hide the word in our, of God in our heart that yes. we might not sin against him. I might use for a, a word this morning as we were meditating, the Lord was bringing, amen, a word to my heart concerning this morning. And, and obviously with all that we go through and what we're going through as a people and as a nation, I thank God that God allows us to survive. I thank the Lord that God gives us the space to survive. And I'm grateful that God is greater than our problems. I'm grateful that God is greater than our situations. Amen. Isn't that the kind of God we serve? He's greater than our situations. So if I might use for a word this morning, it would be struggle through it. Struggle through it. And when you think of struggle, struggles are part of your life, whether you're a believer or an unbeliever. You don't have to be black or white, red or brown. All you have to be is alive and you will go through something in this life. But I thank God that as a disciple of Jesus Christ, God gives us the wherewithal to know that we can make it. Jesus said on his, to his disciples on one occasion, he said, in the world you're going to have tribulation. He said, but be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. So trouble is acquainted with all of us. It, it's, it's a partner to all of us at one time or another in our lives. But thank God that he never leaves us forsaken. He never leaves us desolate. 
He never leaves us alone, but God is faithful to his word. It's common to us, and as believers, we're required to walk in faith. We're required to believe God. We're required to take him at his word, and God, through his word, commands us to be diligent, commands us to be faithful, commands us to be uh, 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 adhere to his word and take him at his word, but all the while when we trust God, it takes work. And when we trust God, it takes patience. And when we uh, uh, desire to do the will of God, it takes struggle. It's not an easy thing to be a, beli uh, a believer if you indeed uh, mean what you say because it's a battle, it's a struggle, but thank God that God gives us the victory in Jesus Christ because we could not walk this walk apart from the indwelling of the power of God, the Holy Ghost, in our lives. We would be uh, uh, aimless, we would have no direction, no vision, no purpose, no strength, apart from the strength that God gives from within. So oftentimes when you look at it, whether it's an external struggle or an internal struggle, we know that God is faithful to keep us in the midst of it all. I'm glad, I'm glad, because I don't have to hear God all the time, though I listen for him. I don't have to see him in my, in, 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 if you will, in, in, my, in my sleep or in a, in a vision, but I know that God is present because his word declares and is refreshed in my spirit by the Holy Ghost that he will never leave me, yes, Lord. nor forsake me. So I'm content knowing this, that God is faithful. Yes, whether the attack is personal, whether the attack is general, whether it's on the outside or on the inside, God is more than able. The Apostle Paul was one of the greatest apostles that ever lived, and God used him mightily. God called him to serve, and uh, on one occasion, he said, listen, I, I, I've done a lot, and, and almost as if I'm the chiefest apostle, he said, but yet I'm the least because God kind of called me out of, out, of, out of season, out of due season. I was one of the last ones to be picked, but God had a major test and a major uh, calling on my life, and he says, I'm yet blessed. Thank God for the Apostle Paul. He said, listen, I, I, I went through some stuff, and all this because of my desire to do the will of God. He said, I got stuff happening on the outside and on the inside. All of it encompassed in, in a struggle for the kingdom of God and for the sake of God's word. Have you ever stood for something and found yourself in trouble because you stood? If you had given in, you wouldn't have seen this trouble that you're going through right now, but you stood for something. Somebody said one time, when you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. That's right. So I thank God that God gives us the grace to stand in having done all to stand. The Apostle Paul was, was not... Uh, uh, unlike us, Paul gave us testimony as well as clarity in what we would have to face as believers. Look at what he told the church at Corinth. Uh, he revealed to them in his, his second letter to the church at Corinth. Second Corinthians 1 and 8 says, For we would not, brethren, have you to be ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure above strength, in so much that we despaired even of life. Paul said, listen, I was in so much of struggle, I was in so much of a fit, was such that I felt like, listen, that my life was over and I was going to die. He said, I was on the edge, whoo, glory, with the struggle and the stuff that came to me in Macedonia, but God kept me. He said, I despaired even of life. So if you ever feel like, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm tired, I, I'm just not, I, I just don't feel like living anymore. You're not alone. The Apostle Paul sensed the same test, and God brought him through. Mm. He sensed the same feeling. He went through the same pressure that you and I are pressed with. Struggle through it. 
God has determined that we survive. God has determined that we get through. Paul tells the same church in the same letter, it's a struggle, but God comforts him. 2 Corinthians 7 and 4, he says, listen, great is my boldness of speech toward you. Great is my glory of you. I am filled with comfort. I am exceedingly joyful in our tribulation. He said, for when we were come to Macedonia, our flesh had no rest. Mm, glory to God. But we were troubled on every side. He said, within were fightings and within were fears. Without were fightings and within were fears. Listen, I was running for my life. He said, and on the inside, I was battling my, uh, my flesh with the fear because I was in trouble. I was going through something. He said, nevertheless, God, the God that comforted those who are cast down comforted me by the coming of Titus. He said, even though I felt like, listen, I'm running for my life. We sing a song, I'm running for my life. If anybody asks you, what's the matter with me? Tell them I'm saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, and I'm fire baptized. But I'm running for my life. I'm in a struggle, I'm in a battle. But I'm trusting God and taking God, glory to God, at his word. He said, listen, even though I'm running for my life, the Apostle Paul said, God sent me some comfort. In this case, his brother Titus came to encourage him. Has God ever encouraged you? I believe he has, or else you wouldn't stand. I believe he has, or else you wouldn't say, you know what? Thank God. Lord, I, I'm, I'm grateful that you've been faithful. God, I'm grateful that you've been there for me. I'm grateful, God, that you've been faithful in my life. Glory, glory, glory. Look at our text here. Glory to God. Amen, amen. James, a servant of God, and the Bible says that the letter was to the 12 tribes, and he said, count it all joy. He said, when you fall into diverse or different temptation, because the trying or the testing of your faith works patience, but let patience have its, have its formula, if you will, its perfect work, that you might be entire and patient and wanting nothing. He said, listen, he said, understand this, you're going to go through some stuff, but let it, let it develop, let it come to fruition, because it's bringing about something better that you would never experience except you've gone through what you need to go through. Sometimes God has us go through some stuff so he can take us to the next level and that part is what he calls perfection. God said, listen, I'm, I'm working with you. Because see, oftentimes people quote Romans 8, 28, all things work together for good to them that love God and to them that are called according to his purpose. And many times people take that to think sometimes that the good is always the good and stuff we're going to like. But oftentimes the good seemingly at the time is the bad. And we go through it, but when we come out of it, we're better off than we went through. Yeah. Have you ever looked back on a text? Have you ever looked back on a struggle? Have you ever looked back on a situation and it said, listen, had I not gone through that, I wouldn't have been able to handle this. Yeah. Yeah. Struggle through it. Recognize that God is just not throwing darts at you. God is just not allowing stuff to come in your life to see if you can take it. God has a purpose for everything he releases in your life when you take him at his word. So he said, don't be concerned or don't be upset about the diverse things because it's a test. You're going through a process. There's something going on. Glory to God. Glory to God. When you look at the book of James, it talks about a lot of struggles and tests and trials we must go through. And the, the book of James was not written by the apostle James. It was written by an apostle who was named James, who was the brother, or should I say, a distant cousin of Jesus. But the apostle James was the first apostle that was beheaded or martyred uh, in the New Testament. And the Bible said King, King Herod Agrippa had his had him beheaded, and it was all during the time when uh, Peter and Barnabas, and all, Paul and Barnabas, and Peter and John were, were, were evangelizing and ministering, and God had uh, allowed James, the apostle, to be beheaded, but yet still, God still had a James in the wing, who was a cousin of Jesus, who pinned down the book of James. 
So I, I think that God allowed the one, the latter one, to have experience because the church at the time in Jerusalem was in, under extreme persecution. There was a lot of stuff going on. There was a lot of hatred and bitterness and persecution for the people of God. All of them that named the name of Christ were under a death sentence. They were chasing them. They were pursuing them. Their lives weren't worth anything because they thought they were criminals. They labeled them as criminals. And God, through all that, allowed the church to survive. Glory, glory. And here it is over 2,000 years later. The name of Christ, the name of Jesus is still above every name that is named on this planet Earth. Don't tell me he don't have us to survive. Don't tell me God doesn't have a plan or a purpose for his church as well as for his people. Thank God for keeping us in the midst of it all. Glory, glory, glory. So I believe the author of this book was well acquainted with suffering and was more than qualified by the Holy Ghost to pin down that there would be diverse tests and diverse things to go through, but that God was testing them. Thank God for his grace. Glory, 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 glory. Look at the rest of our text in James 1 and 5. It says also, he said, if you lack wisdom, ask God. Oh, God will give it to you. He said, don't waver when God gives you the wisdom. And so to say that you don't waver in your faith because he said your wavering is like a wind, like when the wind tosses you left and right. In other words, God's determination for us to be faithful is to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. And that text also is in one of the letters to the church in Corinth. It says, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in God. Suffer through it. He said, listen, because there's an end, there's a completion. God has a purpose. God has a plan. He's not toying with you. Glory to God, he's developing you for his eternal purpose and his eternal glory. He said, listen, if you waver, he said, you're like a double-minded man. Amen. You're thinking with two heads and you can, you can never come to any kind of conclusion. So he said, don't expect anything from God if you waver from one point to the next point, never believing God and taking him at his word. Suffer through it. Suffer through it. See, it's only temporary. I heard some people say sometimes, old cliche, that trouble don't last always. But in the midst of trouble, it seems like it's going to be forever. But come on, come on, come on. Somebody can testify that they look back on trouble and say, Lord, I'm glad I'm out of it because you brought me out. Yes, yes, yes. Mm, thank you, Lord. I don't know how, I didn't know I was out. But all I know is things got better. I had to look back and remember from whence God brought me. When I look back over my life yeah. and I think things over, glory to God. I know I'm blessed. I know I've been brought out. I know I've been blessed. God has brought me through some yes. stuff yes. and if God wasn't in it, I wouldn't be standing before you. They would have spoken more than Dick Penn over my life had not the hand of God kept me yes, yes. in the trouble. Yes. I thought I was going to die, but God said, no, you ain't going to die, you're going to live. Yes, sir. He brought me out of a heart. I understand what David meant. He said he brought me out of a horrible pit because when you're going through, it's horrible. But God is able mm, to let you suffer through it and bring you out like like pure gold bring you out oh a winner and not a loser that's the kind of God we serve glory glory he's more than able to bring you out I look I look at uh, struggle this morning in three aspects thank God thank God the first part of struggle I like to talk about is calculating or calculate the struggle the struggle James told the church he said listen count it all joy when you face Temptation. In other words, calculate the struggle. Expect the challenge. 
You got to sum it up. This is not make believe. Prepare for battle. Expect glory to God. Expect the challenge. You are in a fight. Life itself is a fight. Expect a challenge. Ephesians 6 and 10 says, Be strong in the Lord, glory of God, and in the power of his might. Expect glory to God. Calculate it. Don't act like that when you're walking around with your head in the sand like nothing will ever happen to you. Expect it. Calculate it. Mm. Think about it. Run it over your mind a couple times. Expect Okay, I'm in a fight. And God is able to bring me out. Okay, I'm in a fight. I'm getting ready to go through something. God, I thank you for the grace to get through. Yeah. Luke 14 and 28 says, listen, for which of you intending to build a tower, sit if not down first, and count it, he said, count it all joy, count it the cost, whether he has sufficient to finish it. Less happily after he had laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock, saying this man began to build and was not able to finish. When you calculate, glory to God, when you calculate the struggle, you determine with everything within you to finish. You say, listen, I'm in a fight, but I plan to win. I'm in a fight, but I'm coming out. Glory, you can't go into it not expecting to come out of it. Calculate it. Count it all joy. See, that's why he said joy, because joy is eternal. Happiness determines on what happened. In other words, if it happens, I have a good day today, I'm okay. But joy is eternal. Doesn't matter whether I have a good day or not, I have joy. And it's eternal. And regardless of what men might say to me or what men might think of me, I got joy. This joy that I have, we sing a song. Amen. The world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. Calculate. Glory to God. Calculate the struggle. Expect the challenge. Yes. You can go into a fight. Expect it. Size up. Sum up the enemy. Sum up the battle. Sum up what you got to face. Prepare yourself. It might mean you have to get on your knees a little longer. It might mean you have to seek God for some wisdom. Yes. It might mean that, Lord, I don't know what's going on, but you got to give me some clarity on this thing. Calculate it. God, I don't understand it, but I need to know what is, what is the dynamics of it. See, I think that's the problem. We know too much or think we know too much. And oftentimes when we face a challenge, we don't ask God about it. God, we got to be like Samuel. Yes. What would you have me to do? Lord, speak. What would you have me to do? So you got to calculate. Calculate. Glory to God. The struggle. Expect the challenge. That's the first aspect of, of struggle. The second aspect I like to look at is to confront the struggle. Even though you already calculated that you're getting ready to go into battle, you've got to be prepared to confront it because you can never conquer what you can't confront. That's right. mm -hmm. If you've got an issue or problem going on, you'll never solve it by running from it. Right. You've got to face the struggle. You've got to confront the struggle. You've got to address the struggle. Glory to God. you got to face it head on. 1 Corinthians 10 and 12 says this. Mm, Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. There hath no temptation taken you. Now the writer says in uh, James, he said, count it all joy when you fall. So this lets us know that the temptation the temptation has already overtaken us. We're already in the midst of the struggle. To what degree, I don't know. But the writer here in Corinthians gives us an escape hatch, gives us an exit strategy that God is able to keep us in the midst of being overwhelmed with the temptation. Confront it. 
confront it. Because it says here, they have no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God, glory to God, is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. It didn't say he wouldn't suffer us to be tempted. It says above that glory to God. We are able. In other words, yeah, oh, yeah, the line is going to be thrown out. Uh, you're going to be drawn in a little bit. Uh, but God said, I'm not going to let you get put. Glory to God. To the extreme that you can't be released. Yeah. Glory to God. Glory to God. He said, oh, yeah, you're going to be tempted. He said it. He said, but not above. Glory. God always gives you an excellent strategy. Yeah. He always gives you an escape hatch. Don't tell me temptation won't come. It's coming, beloved. Prepare for it. Expect it. But he says, listen, it won't overwhelm you nor overtake you. He said, I'll give you an exit strategy. Look what he says here. Oh, glory to God. He said, above, he said, you will not be tempted above that you're able, but with the temptation, mm, also make a way of escape that you will be able to bear it. Amen. You won't defeat what you won't confront. You can't escape it. You must survive it. Uh-huh. Your adversary must be confronted. Mm. Must be confronted. Must the scripture be. says in the book of James 4 and 7, it says, submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the, the devil, and he will flee from you. So when you are face to face with the adversity, he gives us instructions to resist it because God is already preparing a back door so we can escape it. Amen. Do you remember when Jesus was tempted? He hadn't eaten. He was, he was fasting. It had been almost 40 days and he was he, he had gone before his father for prayer and the enemy came to him at his weakest moment and said, I know you're hungry, so if you're hungry, eat. Because of who you are, you ought to be able to satisfy yourself. Aren't you God? Jesus said, no, 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 no. Man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And the enemy came at him with the same stuff he comes at with us, the world, the flesh, and the devil. Everything, everything. He came at the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life. Everything that would afflict us, he tried, sought to afflict our God. And he stood and confronted the enemy and was given a way of escape by the word of God. Woo! That's why the word of God is greater than your struggle. The word of God is greater than your temptation. The word of God is greater than whatever you're going through right now. Amen. It'll give you the comfort. <laughs> It'll give you a hiding place. I love what the 91st Psalm says. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. In other words, God said, I'll hide you if I have to. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Mm, you ain't got to say nothing. I'm just hiding you. <coughs> oh, you're under attack, but I'm hiding you. Don't worry about it. See, that's why you don't have to fight your own battle. God said, I'll hide you. You take me at my word, I will hide you. In the midst of the confusion, if he hit the Hebrew boys in the midst of a fiery furnace, God has no problem hiding you from your adversity. Glory. And allowing you to come out. Glory to God like pure gold. And finally, let the last act of struggle is to complete, complete the struggle. James told the church at uh, told the church he said, in his letter to James and in, in the book of James he said let patience have her perfect work so you can be complete basically and want nothing. Amen. God wants to bring conclusion. God wants to bring finality to our issues so that 
we are not driven to the point of exhaustion, but rather driven to the point of victory. And then we are refreshed by the word of God. So we're able to receive and take on anything else or any other challenge that may come in our life. Amen. Glory to God. The Bible says in 2 uh, Timothy 4 and 6, he says when the apostle Paul was toward the end of his ministry and recognized that God was about to call him home for he had fought a good fight. He said, listen, he says in 2 Timothy 4 and 6, for I'm now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand. He said, I have fought a good fight. Uh -huh. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. He said, henceforth, there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Oh, struggle through it, beloved. Struggle through it. Which the Lord, the righteous judge, judge shall give me at that day, and not only to me, not only me, me only, but unto all them that love his appearing. The apostle Paul said, listen, my end is almost near. I'm at the point of completion. And Paul recognized that all the struggle, all the torment, all the stuff he went through, all the victories, all the, all, listen, all the cold nights, all the dark nights, he recognized that it was all for the purpose of the kingdom of God. And he said, listen, I'm now ready to be offered up. He said, it's over, it's complete. I've kept the faith. I've done what God said. So he said, now there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness. He recognized that God had promised him that he'd be faithful, that God would give him a crown. If he'd be faithful, that God had a heavenly reward for him. But in the process of his struggle, it was all that he needed was to know that God was more than evil. In our struggle, uh, I know none of us are in heaven right now, but we recognize that heaven's going to be our completion. But in the process of us getting there, we know that we have to go through some stuff. Uh, we got to struggle through some stuff uh, in order for God to bring about the completion, for in order for God to bring about the maturity in our lives that cause us to be victors and not victims. My Lord. Woo, glory. When I pray, I know God hears me. That's all part of the struggle. Because sometimes when I prayed as a new convert, or prayed not knowing what I was praying about, as I learned the grace of God and was able to take God at his word, now I pray with authority. Now I pray with power. Because I recognize that God has transformed my thinking. I know I'm the head and not the tail. I know I'm above not believe. Uh, I know I'm a winner and not a loser. Why? Because God has given me the grace to be developed. The grace to be strengthened yeah. in my confrontations, uh, in my situations, in my battles, and in my struggles. I'm learning that God is more than able to bring me out. I don't care what it looks like anymore. I know God is able. Yeah. Yes, yes. And I've struggled through that. I had to learn that in the struggle that God was able. I had to learn that by keeping my mouth shut sometimes that God was able. I struggled through it. I didn't like it. I didn't care for it. But I struggled through it. Amen. Knowing that God, Ooh, glory, yes. that God was able. I knew God would finish it. I knew God would fix it. I knew God would bring me out. Hey, some stuff blindsided me. Everything that come in your life, it isn't because of something you've done. It's an attack you're under. And stuff blindsides you sometimes. But I understand this. Whether it comes from the north, the south, the east, or the west, God is able yes, yes, yes. to keep me in the midst of the attack. Just have to struggle through it. Uh, I just got to hold on to the horns of the altar, knowing that God is faithful to do glory to God what, what he said. Oh, God. Oh, God, I thank you. When I look at one, one more individual, look at their life, I was encouraged by this. Uh, when I thought about it, when you look at the patriarch Jacob, uh, Jacob, glory to God, was the son of Isaac. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and God used him mightily. But Jacob was a con man. Jacob was, if you will, a schemer. He wasn't a dreamer like Joseph, but he was a schemer from the beginning. Oh God, even at his birth, the Bible says he grabbed onto his brother's heel. Even when he was born, he was a twin. His brother's name.
name was Esau. And the interesting part about Jacob, Jacob all throughout his life schemed stuff. He always was underhanded. He always had something going on. But understand that God still had his hand on Jacob's life. Yes. Mm -hmm. It surprises me. But understand this, it shouldn't surprise me because God saw us at our worst uh, and loved us with his best. Glory to God. So Jacob was a schemer even from birth, but God was mighty in his life. Jacob had an occasion in his life in Genesis 32 and 26. He said, and he said, let me go for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, thy name shall be no more called Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince thou hast power with God and with men and have prevailed. Jacob's little name means supplanter. It means a con man. It, it means someone who's, 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 who's mischievous and, 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 and devious. Uh, and that's who Jacob was. Uh, he was the second son of the twins of Rebekah. But God still had his hand on J Jacob's life. When Isaac was 160 years old, he sought to bless his children. And in the Jewish culture, when they would send the blessing, amen, if you were to get the blessing, it was like, it was almost a coronation because the blessing meant the blessing. In other words, it was a transference of authority, power, and blessing. Yes. And Jacob was old, he couldn't see well. Not Jacob, Isaac was old, he couldn't see well. And he told his oldest boy, which was Esau, he said, listen, you go on out and get me some food. I'm hungry. And when he went out to get the food, Rebecca, the mama, and Jacob, the son, contrived together yes. to trick the dad yes. and get the blessing. Now, understand this. Prophetically, Isaac was I mean, I should have said Jacob was the one to be blessed. But God allows certain situations to take place. Can't explain it, but God lets it happen. And all I can say is to God be the glory. So here we have Esau out getting food for his father. Yes. And then the mom, Rebecca, glory to God, and Jacob come back in. Dad's about 160 years old. And fur on him because Esau had a lot of had hairy arms so they kind of put fur on him to make him think that he was Esau instead of Jacob. He goes in and the father feels his hands and says oh this must be the son or should I say the oldest twin. He comes back in he blesses them and by the time the blessing was over then Esau, the rightful blessing it, that, if you will, in lineage was the rightful blesser. He comes back in, or the rightful heir. He comes back in, and, and now he's upset. He's discouraged. He, he said, listen, you stole my blessing because he knew that once dad gave out that blessing, it couldn't be reversed. I'm so glad that when God spoke blessing over our lives, it couldn't be reversed. If God said, I'm going to bless you, Expect to be blessed. So regardless of the struggle, expect to be blessed. And so then God speaks a word over Esau. I mean, uh, Jacob speaks a word over Isaac, speaks a word over Jacob, over Esau, and he's still blessed. Then in the process of years to come, now the brother Jacob is almost running for his life. He goes through a process where he meets a woman that he, that, that he falls in love with. Uh, 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 Rachel seeking to marry her. He gets schemed out of her and ended up working 14 years and standing almost in bondage to his uh, uh, father-in-law Laban for almost 20 years. So the same schemes that he would develop was boomerang on him because of the, of the life he lived. Glory to God. See, you don't get away with nothing. God has, well, I'm so glad for the mercy of God. I, I bow my head. God, thank you for your mercy that I didn't get all that I deserved. Glory to God. And God allowed him to be blessed. And on this occasion, he's about to meet his brother, who he hasn't seen in almost 20 years, and he's scared to death. Jacob is scared to death. 
And so he says, listen, I gotta, I'm getting ready to meet my brother. And he, he, he probably wants my life because I stole the blessing. So Jacob divides his family in half and says, listen, if he only sees one half of the family, then maybe he won't kill all of us and we'll still have one half, to, uh, one half remaining. And then Jacob said, listen, oh, said, listen, I want to send some gifts and stuff to my brother. So he said, break it down to like four, four different kinds of gifts so we can show up with four processionals to give gifts to Esau so that we can, we can calm his anger. But how many know that when God's in the plan, God will fix it. God will calm your enemy. God will calm your most hated rival. God will bring you to a place of peace because that's the kind of God we serve. And the Bible says that God did it. And, and, I, and I'm so grateful that the night before Jake, Jake, uh, uh, Jacob was praying, and he was scared to death and he was praying and the angel of God showed up in his, in his, in his uh, room and he prayed and, and, and the Bible says he hugged on to the, to the angel all night and struggled with him. Struggled with him all night. Struggled with him all night. My, my, my. All night. Yeah. And the angel said, let me go. And he said, I ain't gonna let you go till you bless me. See, that's what struggle. Real struggle will let you hold on until you bless. Real struggle will have you hanging in there until you see daylight. If God said it, I'm, I'm content with it, that God will bring it to pass. And if I got to hold on all the time, if I got to stay where I am until you do it, God, or until you move me, I'm fine because I'll struggle through it if that's what you call me to do. Amen. Jacob held and he struggled with the angel all night. All night. To the point that basically, basically the, the hip, his hip was pulled out of joint. The angel as well as his own hip was pulled out of joint. Uh, and he, he walked with a limp even after that time. But the Bible says he held on the angel said to him, what is your name? And the interesting part is he asked him the same thing that his father asked him. When his father said, what is your name? And he lied and said Esau. But this time he said Jacob. He said, no, your name ain't going to be Jacob no more. It's going to be Israel. Because right now he said, you went from being a schemer and a con man, he said, to a godly man. Because now your name is Israel. Because Israel means struggle. Israel means prince. Israel means favor. He said, listen, you had to struggle all night to get it. But I had to bring you to a place of transition so that you could struggle through it and reach the next level that God has for you. Nothing is coming easy, but understand this, and don't be deceived, it's coming. However God said he was going to do it, it's on the way. You can stand in your mailbox, you can look up in the sky and say, Lord, I thank you already for the blessing. Because God, you're bringing me through the struggle, and because I'm struggling through it, I thank you for the answer already. Thank you for the victory. Jacob got his blessing. He got his victory. Glory, glory, glory. He was emptied of his self, of his pride, and humbled before God. And God blessed Jacob. Said, no longer will you be a con man. You're going to be a God man now. You're going to be a prince among princes. I'm going to call you Israel. Glory to God. And God did for Jacob. That he could, what he could never do for himself. Mm -hmm. He struggled through it, wrestled all night, wrestled with an angel all night, and said, I won't let you go. Glory to God. Are you that way with God? Lord, I won't let you go until you bless me. God, I'm standing in need of something. I had something on the altar for a long, I mean, it's been on the altar so long I had to dust it off. But God, I won't let you glory to God until you bless me. You would have never deposited in me to ask for it. But because I asked for it, I know it was you that gave it to me. And even though it had to come to fruition, I won't let you go. I'm going to struggle through this. I won't let you go. Tell you bless 